the beast. Hello everyone. <laughs> and we're here around Russia, around 16. Um, and well, I mean, uh, I mean, this is well loved by some, hated by many, I would say. Yeah, personally, it's a track. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong for driving around the track. I just don't think the layout leads itself to good racing. Hopefully, tonight will prove us wrong with that. Well, yeah, I'm hoping. I mean, it can offer great racing uh, on this game, but in real life, yeah, no, <laughs> never. Um, but I mean, you never know. We could have a boring. We ha could have a stunner of a race. Um, I mean. I'm trying to think. We've we've had some really good races this season, um, which I mean, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I think Bahrain, yeah, Bahrain was amazing. Like round two, Whew. Uh, when everyone kind of crashed at the start, that was a great like second round to kind of like kickstart the season even more. Um, I mean. We're getting, we're nearing to the end of the season. We're seeing like some new faces just pop up now, and some disappear like Aaron uh, two weeks ago. So it's just, well, we know the title is in next ice man's hands, unless he just lags out of all the sessions. But that would really suck. I mean, even even if he like retired from every race for the rest of the season, I think it's going to be hard for. Anyone yeah. to catch him up? He has a, a 102 point lead at the moment. He can't win it tonight, but if he ends up winning this race, it's going to be nigh on impossible for Estimats to uh, stop him. Right, we have 16 drivers for tonight, so that is what we're going to be dealing with. That's actually a decent number, especially at this kind of time of the season um, and really what time of year it is. So I'm quite actually impressed with that. And that's really good moving forward. Um, hello, uh, IGBO Tafosi. Uh, hello, Gazaman. Hello, Wayne. It's nice seeing you. Uh, make sure to have a chat in the comments. Gazaman, we will be cheering you on in the commentary box today. Uh, Foggy's here again. I mean, he's. He, I feel like he could have had a big impact this season, Foggy. He's just sadly not been about. And that, that's yeah, a shame. I feel like if he'd have been... If he'd have been involved in more races, he'd probably been able to get more consistency in the races that he took part in. And he, I feel like he'd be around that like um, that battle for second in the championship at the moment. I think he would, I yeah. He, he, won't, he, won't, he won't be up there with um, Iceman, I don't think. I think if... But just if, Zep if Zepidoodle had been in more races, he could possibly be up there. And obviously, if Aaron hadn't have pulled out, but I'd say um, he's definitely in that next level. I mean, the thing I looked at is um, Zepidoodle was performing insane for the first few races, and then I think when Next Size Man finally started, by okay, my lag's gone, I'm showing up now. I think that's when Aaron kept the pace up with him and had to push even more. And Zephyr just kind of fell. Yeah, I mean, I think it was around Austria where Iceman just had such a good performance, and from then he's been nigh on unbeatable. Hello, Ivan. Hello, Sam. Hello, Jess. How's everyone doing? Very good evening to use. Um. We've got UK Cox, he didn't have the best debut of a race last week, but we are heading into the session. I need to click spectate mode. I'm in spectate mode, am I? You're in spectate mode. No, okay. well, two of us are in spectate mode. I am, so yeah, I am. who else could be. That's, <laughs> that's good. Um, but I'm really excited uh, to be back at One Hub, commentating again for another week. I mean, this is definitely one of my favourite leagues about, and just to commentate is a very good privilege in my opinion. I mean, it's yeah, not they're... not many people are in the commentary team, you know. Yeah, the racing always seems to be good. We've had some like extremely close qualifying sessions, some great racing. I mean, we saw that last time out in 
Singapore in the very changeable conditions. I mean, Iceman took the victory. <laughs> Not on track though. Boris did challenge him. So we'll see if Boris can like, carry that form through yes. to what is his home race. I mean, let's let's talk about Boris for a second. He's came in about mid season, been in the waiting list for ages. The man's put his foot down and showed how aggressive he can be. Don't get me wrong, it's not worked out sometimes, but when it does, the man is flying. Can he maybe carry it over here though? Well, that I have to say, Sing Singapore is a very unique track on the calendar. There's not really many places like it, although the final sector here, you could say, does have some similarities. Just got run through some facts about the Sochi Autodrome. 5.848 kilometers first raced in 2014 the same year of the uh, Sochi Winter Olympics where the um, track runs round uh, 18 corners though I'd say it has a it has a really short one to turn one if we're being technical but it is of course a flat out turn one before you get to the first DRS zone and turn two is the really big vacant zone and I'd be very surprised if we don't see a few cars skipping that turn two we see it so often, uh, especially this year in Formula 2, we saw quite a big crash there with cars skipping and going the wrong side of the bollard. So I'd expect the first corner, well, the second corner, to be a bit hectic. I mean, uh, I'm just looking here. Um, now, Elke Van obviously wasn't here last season, but he's currently just about to come out uh, of the garage in his new Scarlet Red Ferrari. Now, he's out that to disappointing Haas that I hate especially. Don't know if you've seen some of my stuff, but um, <laughs> it's, it's good to see him in that top car now. I think he definitely deserved it. Yeah, he's put in some good performances. He was a bit unlucky at the start of the season. I think he got his first podium in Azerbaijan since then. He's, he's been another one of them really consistent drivers. We'll have a quick run through the championship order. It's Nexus on 239 points in the Mercedes, 137 points is how many SD Mats has, he's one of the race premium drivers, Ivan another race premium driver, just 11 points behind Mats, and the three other race premium drivers are all in a row, we've got Gazaman 9th, Foggy 10th and Bovis in 11th place, with the Constructors Championship it's Mercedes who have a 45 point lead at the moment. So that championship is very much still up for grabs. I mean, that is the battle. It's the battle down the grid next to man. It is clear, basically. I mean, don't get me wrong. His teammate, Azimata, can put up a fight against him some days, especially in qualifying. But he's never been able to beat him on track recently. It's been quite hard for Azimata. Maybe I'm lucky, yeah. but EVM on not lap. Yeah, we'll just go through this lap. So he's already gone through turn one. Heavy braking down towards turn two. Basically one. Keeping it nice, <laughs> nice and clean through there. And then you've got the long left-hander at turn three. We have seen some cars run side by side, but you want to stay on the left-hand side of the track as you're going to the braking zone at turn four. Quite a lot of 90-degree corners to feature on this track. Turn five, another one of those 90 degree corners through the first sector now, getting extremely close to the wall there on the exit. Turn six, pretty much flat, but it makes it awkward as you go through turn seven. Then you've got these double apex left handers at turn eight and nine before again crossing over to the left hand side of the track for turn ten. In the race, it'll be important to get a good exit through there as you cross through the second DRS zone through the long sweeping turn 11. And turn 12 can be extremely tricky if you don't have ABS because it leads into the breaking zone at turn 13. Carlos Sainz had a huge smash there in the Toro also a few years ago. Then we're into this very fiddly final sector of the lap, turn 15 and 16. It's very easy to lose some time there if you just go in a bit too deep. And then the final two right-handers, you can see the pit entry there on the right-hand side. Turn 17, leading into turn 18, and it's an extremely short blast to the line, and it is a 133.499 for Eva Hannon on those medium tyres. As it seems like the Mercedes behind him either backed out his lap, or, well, as it matter, backed out, or sent validation, but next ice man beats the time on the soft tyres. I mean, soft, the the tyres are not a problem around here. I'm surprised that Eva Hannon is on the mediums right now. Uh, 
AB of a 35.4 in the mediums, that's not the pace you want to be setting. I'd say medium pace is about the 32.5, that's where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, that is a big gap, 1.6 seconds. That is not all going to be down to the tyres. I know Gazaman earlier on, he was talking about what sort of pace he was getting in. Foggy up there with the horse. He, he was saying a 132.8, and he felt like he was off the pace with that. So maybe we will see some challenge nexus. Either Hannon on the mediums doesn't surprise me too much. I do see drivers quite often start qualifying one set harder than what they intend to qualify on. Bit surprised Foggy's on the hards though. Minel Kilvan in the pits again it seems. So not setting a lap, maybe just testing the tyres, seeing what they're like. Hey, but let's watch ST Mats here. He's going to overtake mode, heading up the back straight here. I mean that McLaren looking low as ever. I don't know if that's just me, but it looks very low. It's getting very nice cat and miracles. I'm liking these. So McLaren comes through the very tight chicane there. Now to the uphill chicane. I mean, this is one where you lose the back end, and I was just caught that perfectly. Uh, see, Matt's struggling through that corner. It's because the obviously when you're going up an elevation, then all of a sudden it like flattens out. It just sets the car off a bit, but a very free flat and that mistake. I mean, that mistake probably there, cost him. Yeah, that that mistake cost him a bit, quite a lot. Yeah, Pizza Parker has moved into second position. We'll have an update from the stewards on the inquiries at the end of the Singapore Grand Prix, and unsurprisingly, they all resolved around penalties. Pizza Parker managed to get 30 seconds of penalties removed which meant he ended up finishing in sixth place unfortunately sam couldn't get any of his removed as he didn't provide the race director footage i'm sure he's still a bit angry about i think it was, was it 54 seconds worth of penalties it was a ridiculous amount and track limits can be a problem around here rarely goes p4 in the mediums well 33.3 quite a way off his teammate that's not usual of him usually right there bang on with his teammate yeah, there does seem to be quite a few big gaps throughout the field, so I think there's a few drivers like ST Maps was just struggling to hook everything together at the moment, but unsurprisingly, Nexus Iceman having no such problems with that. So we've got VSR Vasta Racer and Midnight now in the chat. Hello everyone. Nice to see some familiar faces. Uh Adam yeah, are coming in the pits there. But yeah, EVR you'll Sam be able to watch them later on. As always, now, AVR Sam was swinging an amazing pace to be honest last week. Uh, was up for the Iron Brew podium, but sadly just slipped off of it. And sadly, he's not being offered Iron Brew this, this race. If he performs well, though, it could be an offer next week. Yeah, we'll see how he does without that pressure of the Iron Brew on his shoulders. He has managed to get a driver of the day so far this season, but no podiums for him. 11 plays at the moment but yet to set a lap time and with 10 minutes remaining in qualifying it's Iceman, Pizza Parker and Estimats your top three. Boris out on an out lap now so be sure to watch him. Can you check where Elke Havana is on track? I'm sure we talked about yeah. it the other week or I might talk about it. Of Boris. Okay uh, so we'll look at him after. Um, I don't know if it was you I talked to this about it might have been Sam actually. I would love to see a track map that you can bring up on your screen to show where the cars are on track so we just have a better idea. It could literally just be quite small. But Sam goes P2 and 32.7 on the soft. So next ice fan really on another level there. Yeah, I, there's definitely some more time of it to behold. I mean, Peter Parker, he was on the mediums when he set his lap time, so he can go up there as well. I was looking at Sam's lap there and it, he was missing a few of the corner cuts, um, some of the majors, but let's go on to Elke Avan here as he comes in to the tight chicane under the tunnel. As uh, Elke Avan always kind of looks very stable with his cars, my controller is just disconnected. What a bad timing. <laughs> I'm currently it's running. You, it's always good to when you when you a driver who's smooth is usually pretty decent. As I'm radio commentating you through the end of Ivan's lap, heading round the final corner now. 
and it is a 132.443 so that is good enough for second place for Ivan at the moment the astronaut eh? astronaut on his debut yeah I mean I've not um, known of him joining but it's nice to see new faces like I said I mean what that's a decent performance from him there he's only been a 10th off LK van doing it wrong LK van looks like he had a few more time uh, to be had in his lap I think a lot of guys do as it just yeah. it doesn't seem like much of them are really pushing the boundaries yet. Yeah, they've still got eight minutes to go. Most now heading onto their second one. So astronaut he he didn't realise he was racing until I think either late yesterday or early on today. So that is a great lap. He may not have put as much practice in as some of these guys, but just shows how good Nexus has been. He's like six steps clear at the moment. I think he was up on that last lap, but he's just bailed out and headed into the pit. So I'm not sure if he'd invalidated it anywhere. I mean, I'm looking at Eviana now. He's on the lap as he comes around the second last corner. And his Ferrari. He's been in the Ferrari whole season. He's been very consistent. Goes P1 with a 1.31.4. Yeah, very fantastic lap there by Eviana. I think he was cutting it pretty close on fuel. I know he'd run out of ERS all the way around, but that is a benchmark. He's definitely shown pace at many points this season. And he's showing it once again great lap and more than a second ne well, nearly a second I should say faster than his teammate I mean what are you expecting from times here do you think they're going to make it into the 30s possibly or do you think it's going to be about the 31 2 mark I think I, I can't see anyone getting into the 30s if I'm being honest I'd be very surprised I think any, if you get 31 0 31 31 0 31 1 I'd expect you to be on pole position Oh, can Next Ice Man do that? As uh, there's a lot of people coming out, including Next Ice Man. Sam also coming out behind them. Uh, Pete's Park on an out lap. His team Matt's on his lap. She's got in high here. And can he take this corner better? It's uh, still a bit. I think he's just being a bit careful. Misses Apex off the track and oh! Saved it from the wall. It's, maybe he's set up today. Because I did yeah. see. His uh, car looked really, really close to the ground, so maybe he's just running a bit to like really low camber, or and I'm not too sure, or right height. Oh, as I mean, it's Daniel, all, it's, all, it's all well and good having a setup that might just give you a bit more pace, but if you can't keep it pointed in the right direction for all 27 laps, you, you're going to struggle. Of course, no points given out for qualifying. Well, you're never going to be earlier, first. Someone earlier mentioned that Pizza Parker, they thought he was lagging. I haven't seen any of that, but I'll keep an eye out if he does, because that can cause some trouble, of course, when it comes He's to just about to start a lap. overtaking. But his teammate is also on the lap in the second sector. They're now that beautiful pink racing point, the one I wanted in, but still haven't been allowed in. So stuck in the cr ass. <laughs> I hate that car. I have official hatred. So did Grosjean and Magnussen, let's be honest. <laughs> so Riley coming now through the back straight-ish, I suppose, turns I, 11 and I mean, 12. Six temps up as well on his best. I think even the Haas doesn't like the Haas, like, you know. <laughs> there's, I don't think there's ever been a car in Formula 1 that has had such variability across different circuits and even different days. I mean, how many, t how many times did you see Kevin Magnussen nearly up there with like the Ferraris and the Red Bulls and Miles Clear of the McLaren's and the rest of the midfield. And then it comes to the race and he was barely struggling to beat the Williams as Riley fourth place at the moment but still eight temps off of Eva Hannon. Well, next ice man seems to have just came out and came right back in. Obviously not thinking it was late enough as the matter also comes in spits after going P3 with a 131.8. Matching the teammate like I was saying earlier. Now Sam on an outlap, Pete Parker on a lap as well as he comes around the second last corner. Can he improve and is 132.7 going around the final corner now. This is a very short run to the checkered flag and it is P5 a 132.4 improved by three temps. Uh, just behind his teammate at the moment, Boris, the only person yet to have set a lap time. As the other drivers are going on to their final ones, it is Eva Hannon, Iceman, as a matter again, right behind his teammate in qualifying. 
Then you've got the two racing points rounding out the top five at the moment. So it seems like the first person to set their final lap here is going to be Sam. So we'll stay on board with the Red Bull driver here, which has a number of, trying to see his number real quick in the... And a camera, oh, he goes by. Can't see his number. <laughs> uh, I wish they put the number like, next to the driver name or something. I think that'd be cool. It goes in One two code. turns two One there. Code is, these are all ideas for the PlayStation 5. Yeah, ideas for the Spectre mode. I, I put a tweet out um, quite a while ago talking about it. I think there's a lot of stuff they need to do with it. It needs to be a lot better. Especially with the amount of leaks that are about now in the eSports event. I mean, it'll even help themselves in the eSports event. Yeah, I think I think Sam is trying to rush back to the pit lane as quickly as possible. Yeah, yes, yeah, because he got in the he's, lap. He's not, he's not going to do it, I don't think. Cut the okay. corner, Sam. <laughs> Cut the top. I think he's going to need it to go over the ski jump in the Olympic Park to get back to the pit lane <laughs> mid-time and get out again. Never mind cutting the corners, but we'll have to see. Well, let's watch Elke Avan, who's also in a lap here. Got Daniel ahead of him. So it was hitting that little orange curb there on the left that gave Sam the invalidation. But Ivan maybe going to try and set up with the top guys. Maybe his teammate beating him out, but goes around turn five, I want to say. Because it's a double right hand with a long left, or does it count as one? Uh, it's. I think the, the count. The. The double right hand has two corners. The long left hand has only one corner. I, right. I don't get the track. FIA decide on the track number based on the G forces felt through the corners. Sometimes I really do not get how that, that turn little, one, yeah, the turn king. two, turn two feels like a chicane, but is one corner. But anyway, AV has retired from the session. He's the slowest by quite some distance of everyone who's set a lap time, so he's really struggling today. Ivan, though, seven tenths up on his best. If he nails this final sector, he could challenge his teammate. Goes a bit way tight, but gets a good exit. Can he set it as he goes found the second last corner through the final now. Running up to the lane, what's it gonna be? P2 with a 131.7. Next size man will beat it, maybe possibly Azimatter as well. ST Matt's in none as well. It seems like he has messed up on his lap. Yeah, so that's that'll be it for ST Matt's. Fifth will be the best he can do. But yellow flags game in sector three. I'm not sure if that's just the car travelling slowly to get out of the way. Well, we have Daniel here in the house who now has a teammate of I, I don't know who his teammate is now actually. His Evans. teammate is Liam, who is absent tonight, I believe. Ah, uh, the, the guy that likes to ship all different teams. <laughs> Started at the Renault, went to the Red Bull. Now at the halves. Yeah, I think I said to Liam, he's been a bit like a 1990s pay driver, just going, whoever will take his hard-earned cash. <laughs> I mean, ever since Haas joined F1, it's definitely... I mean, they came in straight away and they were a midfield team. Do you think that was yeah, maybe their problem? I think th Wait, Riley helped, and Pizza didn't make it. Them, what's helped them is the Ferrari parts. But I think when Ferrari's had a few problems with their car like this season, it has hindered them. Astronaut was four tenths up going through the middle sector and that could take him all the way up into fifth place. In fact, he's just behind Estimats. It's six for the Renault driver as he crosses the line. A great a debut. Here at one hub this season. It's saying that Daniel was out in an outlap right now, but I know he's not. As he goes P6 with a 32.1, that's a decent result for him. Yes, but, but it's stuck. Matt's and Boris goes up into fifth place, so that midfield section is looking fairly close at the moment. Foggy, P12. Let's watch Nexus. Eva Hannon's gone even faster. Eva Hannon 131.399. Now, can Azimata beat it? He's out in front of the Mercedes gang. It's just He's coming uh, up to the second last corner. I've, I've noticed that. The Mercedes drivers really, they do run very close and quality. Like right next to each other. The teamwork works sometimes. As Azimata splits one five. the two Ferraris. And Nexus. Yeah, because Iceman doesn't. Oh, he does, but in validation. He improved by three times, so wouldn't have bet his teammate, I don't think. 
I think he would have oh, it would have been close, but great job by Eva Hannon. Coxie comes across the line. He can only get 13th in the end. Pepelo ditched his lap towards the end. So, Ferrari Mercedes, Ferrari Mercedes here in qualifying in Russia. I mean, could this be the fight that we were looking at? I mean, that, all of them very evenly matched. Uh, it was unlucky there for Iceman, but he wouldn't even put in pole. So Evie Allen looking like the faster driver today as I watch Kazaman absolutely slam into a Renault. It'll be helping to avoid that during the race, but yeah, great job by Eva Hannon to take pole position. As a matter, got within two attempts, and that's good enough to get on the front row of the grid. Ivan in third, and then the championship leader, Iceman, is in four. Boris rounded out the top five with Estimats in six. And then it's Dan in seventh. Astronauty, great job on his debut to take eighth position. Sam and Riley round out the top ten. Eleventh is Peter Parker, just behind his teammate. He will have a fresh choice of tyres, of course. And then it's Foggy, Coxie, Gazaman, Pepperloo, and AB rounding out the field. I mean, AB really um, not being able to do much in his debut race at Singapore and hasn't shown up in qualifying today. Yeah, he was on the. He did set his fastest lap on the harder tyres, of course, on those mediums compared to everyone else setting the times on the softs. It's, it's going to be a dry race, thanks to our weatherman Gaz. Though those clouds don't exactly look too promising, so it should stay dry. Wait, so Sam, why did you back out in your lap? <laughs> Sam saying he didn't get validation. Well, let's see. I mean, it did, say, it did say on my screen that he had low fuel, so I think he was possibly just trying to get back into the pits as quickly as possible, because he was going to run out. Hello, Dane. I've seen you on the waiting list. Welcome to One Hub again. So, predictions. Who do you think is going to win this race? I mean, showing the pace there, I think it's Eli Allen, but then again, race pace uh, is between El Kiavan and Iceman, I think. I think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be Evie Allen goes third, as a matter. I mean, I think Boris is going to go P4 today. Uh, as a matter, I feel like not going to be able to hold that podium. He might, he might do. He definitely has pace to it, but I just feel like Boris is going to get ahead of the guys at the start. So, Boris getting P4. Well, well I, I mean, I've, I'm going to make a mental prediction. I think Foggy can get on the podium. But... You've seen him before. You don't just, putting that, just putting that out there. Tire choices that everyone has gone for. We knew the top 10 would be on the softs, as are Foggy, Coxie, and Gazaman. Peter Parker, Pepe Lou, and AB have gone for those medium tyres. I mean, uh, like, but they're not popping up for me. I can put the wrong thing on. There we go. There we go. Right. Um, so, yeah, top 10, of course, on soft tyres. Peter Parker on the mediums. We have to keep an eye out on. Peter Parker, Pepelu and AB for today's race. Starting on the medium tyres. It's going to be good. Yeah, and like, as I mentioned, turn two always seems to cause a few problems around here. and So maybe, just maybe, there'd be a slight chance of a safety car. I'm finishing my lollipop. I'm perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, no better time to finish it. Eva Hannon with the best view possible. That is a bunch of fog. <laughs> yeah, it's looking extremely cloudy out there. If anyone's watching, feels like they want to join in and perhaps improve their setup. I know a few drivers have said the pad is OP around here, but if you want to use the steering wheel, there's no better way of using it than using one of the many next level racing products who sponsor this stream. And you can use the code one hub ten. To get a 10% discount. Well, what a product they do. I mean, for so many people, it is a go to. Uh, they offer a cheap but very great quality. I would say they're one of the best in the business, if not the best in the business. 
I'm very tempted to get myself the wheel stand light, but I can't be bothered to put my wheel, steering wheel in the car and drive it down to Milton Keynes. That is the main thing stopping me buying one. Why do you take your, why do you have to take your wheel down? Because it's currently at my parents' house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not helpful. Just ask them to send it up. Just put it in a box. Send oh, it through the post. I'd hate to pay the postage on that thing, but anyway. <laughs> we've got the final few cars coming through. The grids did seem fairly spread out here, so those at the front could be losing tyre pressure as AB takes up the final slot on the grid, and I will leave it to Brett to talk you through the start of the Russian Grand Prix. Well, as the car revved their engine, it's going to be like a car's takeoff here in the lights. Go red. It is now five red lights, and they are... Out and away we go for the Russian Grand Prix. It's not the best start for Matthew Matter, but Elke Avang gets a better one, similar to Sebastian Vell today, but already contact, then play off for Azimar. The two Mercs got damage, I think. That's not a great start for the two Mercs, but Elke Avang not challenging his teammate. Yes, he is actually down the inside, but he's got a Renault of Astronaut and Boris taking over. I did talk about Boris taking right over, but Astronaut on his debut having a huge collision. Many people. ST Matt's out. Yeah, ST Matt's is out and he is fighting for P2. There's a Haas in the background as well. It's Daniel has spun as well. What a chaotic star to today's Grand Prix. Yeah, Nexus has big damage to his front wing. But it's been a perfect start for the Ferraris there. One and two. Boris getting up to third in the Renault. And it was the other Renault of Astronauti. Just oh, Pepe giving a big squeeze here to Gazma. Very late. Very late on his brakes going into turn two. He's completely lost his front wing. That led to cars going all over the place. There was a bit of squeeze in between Azamata and um, Ivan as well. Heading down through turn one. I, uh, Azamata has lost his end play. I think Ivan's got away with damage. And Boris going down the inside of Ivan. That is a great move going into turn 13 from the Renault. Absolutely brilliant and from Ivan's Boris. Out yet again nearly. Reminds me of Belgium. Oh, and he is round. Azimar goes round his outside, sends him spinning into the wall, and that is the Ferrari possibly getting passed by the American next Iceman. That's wing damage for him. So all the top three of the championship having big, big problems here. As I said, that setup of Ivan looks very slidey, and it, once again, he lost it through that slow section of his own accord and then got a bit of help second time around from Bobby. So he is in the so many cars heading into the bit like Coxie. Right Wait a minute, a let's, let's talk about Foggies and P4, same as Sam and P3 here. This is huge. As yeah, chaos ensues at the start, of course Foggy takes what he usually does, takes all the possessions possible. Uh, very similar to Bahrain, I mean we could be seeing him yet in a podium today. I mean, I, I hate, to it. Say, hate, to, hate to say I told you so. <laughs> Sam has, Sam's gone up six places as well. Of course, Foggy, he's got fresh soft tyres. He didn't use these in qualifying. Peter Park has managed to gain a few places on those mediums as well. He's now fighting with Pepperlo. But uh, Nexus got held up in the pits, of course, behind his teammate. having um, Mercedes having to double stack. He's now out in 14th place, Ivan. In 13th, for Nexus straight away put in the corner. So all three, jump, well, the main top three of the championship. Because I feel like there is only real one contender at the moment. All struggling. Estimats out, and Ivan and Iceman in 13th from 14th. For Ivan with a two-second lead ahead of Boris, and, and then gaining. it's a big back back to Sam. I mean, Ivan is literally pulling out two times about every corner. This he's definitely on a mission to get another race win. His last race win, obviously, was at Monaco. And I'm going to be honest, it didn't seem like it was fully deserved as there was a collision between him and Aaron, I'm sure. And Aaron had done very well to get his position in that race. It was just a shame that that happened. But can he prove himself today and get a very well deserved win? But Boris yeah. is actually putting the foot down, but here comes Foggy down the inside of Sam. And then they're going side by side into turn two. Sam comes back round the outside. The Red Bull going at it with the Williams driver today. And they go round the long left hander. Sam holds it. Foggy keeps in pursuit. Yeah, all this battling, of course, allowing those to get away. Azamata is now up into eighth place. He has got past AB, who seems to be really struggling. I'm not sure if he's got any damage on the car. I can't see any. He does, M plate. 
in play damage. He kind of just let everyone by. I don't know what he was doing on the main straight there, but next ice man and uh, LK Ivan. LK Ivan, uh, my bad, is about to have a scrap, and here we go. Next ice man down the inside. I think it's going to be quite easy. It's going to look like. That's the case. I mean, what these two have got to do now, they're in the hard tires. They just take them right to the end and let the race come to them now. They take yeah, it patient, look for the fastest lap possible and don't scrap too much. That's what I was going to say. If they do start scrapping, they could very easily wear those tires out. They should be able to go right until the end of this race now on those tires and it could be a great strategy for them. We will have to wait and see. Foggy has got past Sam yes. though, so he's he's now going to set his targets on Bobby. So he's six seconds up the road, but the gap between the leaders stayed pretty consistent at around 2.3 seconds as we have a yellow flag in sector two, and that is AB. He's completely lost his front wing, and his nightmare start to one hub seems to be continuing here. Well, Sam just going to stick right behind Foggy, let him pull him up, hopefully. But we've got to look at the two Red Bull here, the fourth and fifth. This could be the best possession for the Red Bull if the race finishes like this. A fourth and fifth yeah. is a great result for these two. Yeah, that'd be good for the constructors as Sam's got a good run there on Foggy, but I don't think he'll be able to do anything heading into Put the, the pressure next on corner. Though. As Foggy misses Apex a bit there, giving Sam the better run through here as well. And yeah, he's just got to keep keep it close for these next few corners because he will have DRS on the main straight he did one a bit wide through oh there. but he's and missed again. he's missed Apex he needs to cut that corner a bit more that's how you have to be fast around here use all the exceed track limits yeah you've got to be smart on this game and know where you cut the corners and where you can get away with it Riley hasn't been that smart so far as he becomes the first driver to get a three second penalty well, LK Van sticking right behind Iceman as they catch Astronaut, who really, it was a shame what happened to him there at the start. I mean, don't get me wrong, he did dive it out of nowhere. It was a bit of a selfish move, I think, going from that far back and did cause that kind of chain effect. But you never really know when it, I think this is his first ever league he's been in, as he almost loses the back end there, as he's trying to maybe overdrive the car a bit to get in front of the top guys. Yeah, you know, it's got to be careful, like managing the tyres across the board. You don't want to slide on these if you are planning to go to the end of the race on them. That's looking one thing. Okay in, looking okay in the constructors for Ferrari, though, of course, with Eva Hannon being unscathed in all that first lap carnage. This could help Ferrari really close the gap on Mercedes at the moment at the top of the championship. But the field does seem spread out at the moment, though. I mean, after that huge collision that happened at the start, and that's why I wish, the, the, my biggest wish for the next game is to have kind of a replay system like a, uh, like uh, iRacing, where you can rewind the race. I think that would be great to have because we could go look more in depth for them incidents. Yeah, uh, Iceman now in the slipstream of Astronaut DRS open on the Mercedes, but not able to get close enough as... Oh, but he does get a good run here down the inside, actually. Round the fast left-hander. Astronaut's going to fight him, though, back. And down the inside he goes for the next corner. It looks like it's going to be a kind of effect where he does almost get spun. That's just how the physics on this game work, how that, really, the contact model on this game works. The system, in my opinion, isn't the best it's ever been. Yeah, it does seem to be that if you get tapped on the, if you just get your front wheel caught on someone else's car, it's very easy to get yourself turned around on this game. But the end result of that is Iceman and Ivan are up to 11th and 12th, respectively. And the next target will be Riley, but he's seven and a half seconds up the road in that final points position at the moment. I just want to say that Sam here, as we keep watching him, I'm watching him through some of the corners here, and he keeps just drifting wide. As you can see, his car is just not turning in. He's not getting any wing damage, but maybe when he comes into pits, he might want to put some more wing on. Yeah, because that sliding, it's just a vicious circle. You'll start overheating those rear tyres, and they will cut themselves very quickly. So if he is doing that, I wouldn't be surprised to see him be the first of these front runners to come into the pit lane. Astronaut does keep him with the top guys here. Um, I wouldn't say I'm too surprised, though. He does seem like quite a quick driver. Just maybe needs to... 
get used to league racing and one hop. Yeah, it might, it might be good for him to try and stick with these as much as possible and learn how they're driving the car. You can learn a lot from watching these guys. He is in the DRS of Ivan, who's dropped back a bit from Iceman, so maybe the Mercedes will escape a bit up the road. We will have to wait and see. Pizza Parker, though, is closing on to the back of Gazaman, and I, I begin to see with a lag that someone mentioned there, because Pizza just did something crazy on my screen. Yeah, he's got the rev glitch for me, so I'm not going to watch him, but we do have a very close battle here between, well, really from, Foggy's made the gap, actually, to Sam after, well, Sam supposedly having a bit of wing damage, but I've looked at his wing, checked it very thoroughly, and seems like it's not even uh, the damage that might be a little white bit taken off because usually you can get a little chip in it and you can see it but it doesn't even seem like that so Gazman and his teammate is catching him while Pace Parker is followed behind the two Red Bulls at the moment. Yeah it wouldn't surprise me if it was like the, the like light green wing damage where it's just a tiny bit missing and won't have a huge effect on the car but maybe just psychologically knowing that you've got that yeah. bit of wing damage because if anything you'd expect him to be like understeering a bit more than he is at the moment but well I just want to talk about this just a bit behind him LK Van is sticking with next size man just isn't in the DRS in the moment but the, the gap has been kind of fluctuating between one second and 1.2 but Astronaut was in four times there in that final sector He's putting he on the pressure. Pace. He showed his pace in qualifying, and the race could come to these guys, of course, as long as they can keep their hard tyres in good condition for the rest of this race. They've still got 21 laps, of course, to do on these tyres. Well, one thing for Astronaut is he's got to look at the ERS here. He's not really managing it as well as the top guys, especially next ice man with 70% ERS. I mean, saving it is always good, but at this point, you want to really be pushing. Yeah, you want to try and be as effective as possible. You don't have to worry about any reliability of the ERS parts, of course, like you do in career mode. Uh, those medium tyres, I think, are beginning to get an advantage over those on the softs, because Pizza Parker, certain sections, does seem to be closing up to Gazaman in the well, racing point. That is it's good for Gazaman right now. He is finally in the DRS of his teammate. This is going to be good teamwork. It's just going to give him a bit of protection now going down the straight. And definitely yeah. working in both the Red Bulls' favour. Because it's harder yeah, to it, get past two cars in one. If Sam does have a bit of wing damage, I'm sure Gazaman, if they are communicating, would want to maybe tell him just to move out of the way. So, but losing just a tiny bits of time at the moment to Foggy. The gap's grown to about three seconds between them. It's also grown to three seconds out in front with Eva Hannon ahead of the Renault of Boris. Well, Evian and looking to dominate today's Grand Prix. He shows, I've already said, he has the pace this season to dominate races. And I think this is what really Ferrari needed uh, to show the pace and to show they can compete against the top guys. But would it be a different story if next Iceman, as a matter, LK Van were still up there? I'm not too sure. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we'll never know. We can't turn the clock back, so... This will be good for Ibrahim, and he's, look, he's looking good for only his second win of the season so far, but he did seem to be sliding a lot more on that lap than he has done previously, so we'll have to wait and see before how long he comes into the pits. I imagine if he wants to do another couple Boris of laps. Boris is in the pits. Boris is in the pits. Got it in Nani RS, just trying to get it up a bit, give him that vantage on the outlap, just shove it right high. Okay. Yellow flags in sector three, and that is Pepe Lou in the Toro Rosso, who has gone in deep at turn 13, and severe damage to the Toro Rosso's front wing, so he will be coming into the pits. Shame for him, because he was on those medium tyres. Oh, are we going to see a switch here with Gazaman and Sam? It looks like we are. Sam's got it in none, letting his teammate pass here. And this is smart. Sam's going to try and hold up Pizza Parker and play the team game. Yeah, like I think Gazaman he's pull him up. And hard. It's going to get harder and harder, but it might just give Gazaman that bit of a break that he needs. Astronauti getting a penalty. Bobby's coming out in completely free traffic in those medium tyres in sixth place at the moment. Pepelo in the pits. He'll be changing, I imagine, to the hard tyres to make a one-stop work. I mean, I'm watching Sam the now, and it just his car will not turn in. It's, it's struggling. It's like it's... It reminds me of the ballast days, but 
when we're under steer at the same time. Yeah, so maybe that front wing damage is like more severe than what we are seeing on the screen at the moment. Because the man does seem to have been able to get away quickly. He is in the DRS. Oh, so Pizza Parker, here he comes. Pizza Parker. That rev glitch is annoying me, but he goes down the inside of the rebel. No, he doesn't. He backs out, plays the safe game. He's on the mediums, play the long game. Boris, though, with, oh well, on the mediums, he's got a set. A good few laps here is now. Evianen is in the pits. Let's see how good the undercut is around here, because it is really good around here. Yeah, the gap was just under three seconds at so he came into the pit, so Eva Hannon in the pits now, putting on... Sam comes in the pits. Medium tyres, that seems to be an awful long stop there though for Eva Hannon, so I'd say there's a chance here for Boris, because it is a slow well, pit the lane. final Only corner, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, Boris has passed. I'm not sure, did Eva Hannon have a penalty from somewhere that we've completely missed? Uh, if you can see a race director. He, he has got two warnings, but no penalty. But he was held in that pit lane an extremely long time before those tyres were put on. And the end he result might... is he's now five seconds behind Boris. But he's got to put the foot down that all the time he gained. He's now got to gain that and even more. Sam comes out behind Adimatter. He's got to make the move stick as they are both going to the end of the Grand Prix, most likely. Yeah, expect he's got to make best use of those fresher tyres now because they're both going to be well past their best towards the end of the race. Gazaman is getting away from Peter Parker a bit here, so he's doing a good job. And the leader of this race, and I'm sure he wasn't expecting that after qualifying, is Foggy. I mean, he's done very well there. He always shows up when incidents have been, and that's the case really today. We had about half the grid and an incident at the start there. Yeah, sometimes you just need that little bit of luck. He avoided the card. H has gone deep, as I say that. So these soft tyres definitely been getting past their best. I well, that's what I'm thinking. Him. Maybe that was the problem for Sam. Maybe he just didn't click with the softs, or maybe he'd overdone them in quali because he is right in the back of Azimatter and really flying. Yeah, the quicker he gets this moved on, the better, I feel, for Sam. But there's the understeer a bit there. Needs to get tighter to that corner. Okay, I've with another penalty, I think. As uh, uh, Boris sets the fastest lap. We thought Iviana might have been catching, but he seems like he's not. And in between all that, what we have missed is Ivan has come into the bits and changed onto the medium tyres. So I don't I don't think that was planned. I think he must have gone off somewhere on the track and it seemed to be an extremely long pit stop for Well, it was struggling. He was struggling for traction, so it may have just been a little tap to the wall or a tap to Iceman. We, we don't know. Yeah, because he was right behind Iceman, and it's definitely not a 44 second pit stop time around here. So Ivan now in 40th place, but it's very useful to keep it going because the only difference in the point system in one hub compared to F1 is whoever sets the fastest lap outside the top 10 gets themselves a point as well. So all is not lost. For Ivan, perhaps in this race. Well, I'm watching Sam at the moment. Okay, I'm another three-second penalty. I think he's maybe just frustrated now at this race. But let's watch Sam as he's really trying to push to get past Azimar, but it's no way past just yet. No really real opportunity from the Red Bull. Yeah, Pizza Parker. He's. I was going to say, I think he's going to get Gazaman down the straight, but Gazaman has now dived into the pits, as has Foggy, so that promotes the racing point into the lead. Everyone has now paired. Let's see where they come out in regards to Sam, of course. Oh, Sam getting a very good by two laps. He's going to set himself up for this final sector here, as he's getting very close, pushing as him out, but Evian and answers back to Boris there on that second lap, and says the fastest. Hopefully we will see him catching now. He did catch quite a lot there as matter sliding through the final corner. But here goes Sam. He's in two times of a gap here. Oh wait, no, it's went down a bit. Three times of a gap. Can he get the move done going down the straight? He's just getting no straight line speed. I don't know if he yeah. even used the a DRS there. The undercut there was effective for him though as he has got out ahead of Gazaman and he's a lot closer to Foggy than what he was before. Eva Hannon earning himself a time penalty. He is pushing as hard as he can, but that gap is remaining constant at around about 
five seconds. I think it's going to be tough for him to take the victory today, and I'm not, I'm not sure what happened to him in that pit stop. I think maybe what he's done is he's tried to let go of the clutch very early, and it usually it'll make you sit there and wait for another like three seconds. If it is, that's such a shame for him, because he was going so well. Well, still some time in this race, and you don't know what will happen. And Pizza Parker, the only man, in fact, not to have pitted at all. He'll have another three or four laps, at least, you've got to say, on those medium tyres. Um, definitely. I mean, I'm mean, longer than that, I would say. Uh, probably to lap, I'll probably go to 15 laps on them. But it's not a case of if Boris catches them, because that could really mess up Boris's strategy. Yeah, it, it depends on where you catch him. If he ends up catching him around about turns 13, so he can't do anything throughout the entire final sector, Riley he's next going to be tough. So Iceman gets past Riley by. He's making his way up the grid slowly. Now sets his eyes on UK Coxie. Yeah, I think it's UK Coxie. It might be tough for him to get any further up the field than that, because you'd expect Gelsman... Here goes Sam! Have. Down the inside into turn two is a big dive. Can he get it done? No, he doesn't. It's a better run from Asim out of there. Yeah, Sam not able to keep the momentum up either around turn three, so he won't be able to have a go down the inside into turn four unless it's another very late lunge and he thinks better of it, of course. And as a matter, I've got to say, he's doing a good job on these hard tyres at the moment. He is on the hards, despite it's showing on the screen that he's on the car view anyway, that he's driving around on the medium. So he's doing a good job on these tyres at the moment. Yeah, he is on the hard. I'm just looking at Foggy now though, who's came out, and Sam has actually gained so much time to Foggy. Yeah, that, um, that gap was about four seconds at the end of it. I don't know if Sam did replace his front wing in the pit stop, or if it was, because he didn't it seem wasn't to enough too damage. in the pits. It wasn't yeah, enough so damage won't, to do it. He so. won't have gone for that, but like you said, just maybe more comfortable on these medium tyres than he is on the soft. And maybe makes sense to, if he has put his setup in a direction where he felt more confident on the mediums, knowing you're going to be spending around about two thirds of the race on them, of course. I mean, these tyres do feel quite good round here, but that's the thing I was going to mention earlier. You have one spin round here, and the tyres will be dead for the rest of your stint. They don't pick yeah. back up. Yeah, of course, once a, once his belly tyres start sliding, you are in big, big trouble. Iceman Ramp still around about a second behind Coxie, so he's not going to be close enough to do anything this time around, but he is pulling away from Riley. Sam, not as close to Azamata as he was last time, but out in front, Boris is beginning to catch Pizza Parker. He's not at a point where he'll be getting held up at the moment, but in the next few laps, I'd expect to get moved on, and Nexus has got the move done past Coxie, in fact. He must have come from a long way behind. Well, I'm looking at next ice man, the now, uh, and the Merc. And he's, he's doing a really good job here. He's just setting the pace every lap and being very comfortable at the moment. And I reckon he's going to set him to about P6 in this Grand Prix. Yeah, Ivan once again struggling in that final sector. He's been in the wall again. He's got damage on his car and it's another pit stop, that'll be the third pit stop for the Ferrari team, he's making the pick for Wern, he's not in there, but he's over, yeah, he's as retired. It's race over for Ivan, it's a shame as well because I feel like if the race went different he could have been up there for a win. I just, for some reason he just didn't seem stable at all during throughout sector 3 in this race, maybe if it had stayed he possibly I would have said he would have been able to get a point, because I think he, I'll just quickly check, he, he he did have the fastest lap out of those outside the top 10 by quite some margin, so shame for him that the race is over, but that means it's just getting even, what what the Ivan and Nesty Mats really needed was for them to finish well in this race and for Iceman to retire, he's got the opposite situation in fact, and I'd be very surprised if Iceman doesn't take the title next time out. Looking for the closest fight here, and it's Riley Vise versus Yuki Coxie. But that overtake from Iceman has allowed Yuki Coxie and Riley to kind of come together there. Um, it seems like the mediums from UK are kind of going off at the moment. 
and he's got uh, end plate damage. He's missing the end plate on. Oh, there's a big the dive line. from Riley. That's one. Oh wait, so does Riley? Is that two sides of his wing are damaged? Yeah, Ivan saying he basically got taken out, so I didn't quite see what happened there. I'm not sure if he was with AB on track at all or if that's referring to an incident earlier. I'm in a bit confused here. <laughs> Riley's get very bad in end plate damage and on the harder a... compound is sticking with Coxie. Co Coxie has the same end plate damage and, just all, and same age lap tyres and I think at this point with these tyre life those hards are probably in a better condition than the mediums. Riley again in the DRS zone course with that damage to the front wing these lunges are just not going to be able to pay off but Pizza Parker doing a good job out in front he's keeping that gap fairly stable so yeah how long he's been on them and he'll be able to go to the soft tires when he fits of course he's going to be looking very good towards the end of this race pulled him possibly because I think he'll definitely get past foggy when we have a lot of overtaking to do we will have a lot of overtaking to do yeah, it is a, it's, it's a long pit lane round here, so he may come out round about uh, between Sam and Gazaman, possibly even behind Gazaman as well. Oh, Riley! Has, actually. There we go. There he yeah, is. Yeah, he's got past in the DRS zone. Nice straightforward getting the move done before turn two. And that is ninth place for the other racing point. I even saying it was at the start, I believe, with the Renault, where he got taken out. So that be interesting to see if Aspinaut's first base in one hub ends up with a trip to the stewards as Gazaman gets himself a three second penalty and I said oh. Peter Parker was doing a good job Boris has closed right up so maybe this could be the lap where we see that racing point come in. It was Elke Havan I was watching there on that lap one going into turn two and it was astronaut that sent it from about five places back right down the inside smashing into the side of Ivan giving him that original wing damage. Yeah, Boris has took the lead of this race and the way he passed Pizza Parker meant Parker couldn't get into the pits. I'm not sure if he was planning to anyway. The racing point in the slipstream. Here comes Coxie though on Riley. Riley gives him a squeeze to the wall. But he's going to still try it round the outside. Both of these two wounded over the grass. Coxie goes still challenging for the move. Side by side now up the hill. Up and over they go through the chicane. And Riley has to back out. Bit yeah, smart. All this battling might just allow astronauts to catch up, you never know. I mean, this has worked in Riley's favour though, now he's got the DRS and is right behind Coxie. Yeah, this, I'd expect this to be a fairly straightforward pass. He did it before turn two last time, doing it once again. So that is the move done. Coxie won't week, be able to fight back into turn two. Well, it's so, as matter. Swapping positions once again. As a matter, on the hard, Katz and Foggy, lap by lap now, and is just fighting for that second. Sam's not been able to make the overtake on As a matter, he's just been that long behind him now, his tyres aren't seeing the best of days. They're kind of reaching that middle stage where they might struggle now. Yeah, it's, it's been a great recovery from As a matter, actually, after the start of the race. He got end plate damage right at the start. He's doing well on those hard tyres because I still expect the mediums to be in good shape, especially Foggy's only five laps old compared to 15 lap old hard tyres. But I really think Sam needed to get the move done early on and take full advantage of having the fresher tyres. But you never know that if those two start battling ahead, he could still catch them up. And Peter Parker has to pick, so there's definitely a podium still on here for the Red Bull. I mean, he's going out long, he is going out very long. He could have pitted for the softs already, but maybe he just wants them to be alive for the whole time he's got I'd them on. I'd, I'd expect it to be this lap, because I think he's just losing too much time all of a sudden on those medium tyres. I said I'd expect it to come out in between the red balls. Maybe if he stays out too long, he could be behind Gazaman, and that's just one more car he's going to have to pass. I mean, we're looking at this right now. He will come out in front of Gazaman for sure. Unless some hands in the pit, so maybe it's a little bit soft. But if he's gonna, if Viviana is gonna catch him here on this lap, and if Peter Parker does possibly go for another lap, I mean, 
Is he gonna try and hold them up, or is he just gonna let by? Because if I if I was him, I would let him by. I, I don't think he's gonna have a choice. To be honest, I mean, he will. He will look at that. Like, he'll hold him up through these corners, but that's more just by accident rather than anything malicious or defensive from Pizza Parker. But he'll just have so much more grip coming through the final corners while the Ferrari. We'll see if Pizza Parker heads to the right hand side of the track. You know. no, he's, he's going for one more lap. And that has surprised me to be honest, because even on this lap he's lost well over a second, and this should be a straightforward pass for the Ferrari, you'd imagine. What should get it done well before turn two. Oh! <laughs> Very nice move from Ibiana in there. Um, I mean, unless he goes to lap 20, that just means... Well, I mean, Foggy is losing more time to these guys ahead still, so, but Foggy's losing more time to beat Sparky at the moment. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, down the inside of Foggy, actually, before turn... One, so great move by the Mercedes. He is up into fourth position all of a sudden. Well, now Pizza Parker's definitely got a pit. It's, it would be of his best interest to pit now. As a matter of fact, made the move. And, that, I mean, where the where he should have pit is when Foggy was stuck behind As a matter. Or As a matter was stuck behind Foggy, I mean. Yeah, because you'd expect that gap to start coming down now. He's. he's I think the best Pete's is going to be able to hope for this race is possibly beating Sam and maybe, maybe just getting ahead of Foggy. I mean, it was only, I think, three laps ago he was ahead of Boris. It's now 4.3 seconds that lap. Dan earns himself another penalty. So he's down in 12th place at the moment. And so as Evie Arnhem slowly does catch um, Boris, but I I'm wondering if it's enough because he is catching, but... It's going to be really close at the end. Yeah, he hasn't got much time. Both drivers have a three-second penalty, and they are both one warning away from another penalty. As Peter Parker finally does pit, and Foggy's got back, back past as a matter, in fact. As they go side by side. The inside, then. The, neither one wants to be ahead of the other guy. <laughs> About the DRS detection point, you get and a feeling. Foggy's won that fight for the DRS detection then he goes in to well onto the main straight, and then yes, it's confirmed. But look at how much Sam's caught, and Pete Parker is that's gonna get ahead of Gazaman, but also not lose too much time than we thought due to these two battling. And we know the yeah, outside that... line is more effective around here, and it does work out for Azamatter there. But we can remember Azamatter's tires are gonna go off the cliff in just about four more laps. Yeah, it's how far ahead he can get um, ahead before that happens. Because, of course, Foggy, all that battling between the two and that cagey not trying to be ahead of the other has given Sam a huge advantage there because he's now right on the back of these. And Pizza Parker shouldn't be too long, so maybe I was a bit hasty. We could be looking at a podium here for Pizza Parker, like I said. Yeah, but Riley and huge. Cox is still battling for ninth and 10th place as well. Oh, as I say, that Coxie's gone round and into the wall. Huge front wing damage for the Alpha Romeo, and that's promoted the Renault up into 10th place. So, just a bit clumsy there, I think, from Coxie. Went very far on the inside. The kerb, I think, just unsettled him and he oh, went into the side of right Jesus. <laughs> they thought uh, Azimar and Foggy going at it once again. Yeah, Foggy managed to get past as a matter round about this point less last time around, but as a matter's got it covered off and Foggy's gone deep. That could give Sam a chance if he keeps it tidy through the DRS protection point, but of course Foggy oh, will in. get DRS off the Mercedes as well. And Peter Parker in the lap or two is gonna find himself right on the back of what is gonna be a four way battle for the final podium slot. And we could see one of the biggest fights of the season happen in Russia right now. Yeah, Foggy not able to catch up to Azamata. Ditto with Sam as well, who does seem to have struggled actually when it comes to the DRS zone. So maybe he's just running a bit of a different setup and concentrating on pace through the corners. Maybe that's why the minor front wing damage did affect him quite a lot in that first stage of the race. And Ibrahanen, he's got the gap down to under three seconds, but with just seven laps remaining, is it going to be enough? I mean, it might be, but Foggy gets a free second penalty. Not really like him, usually. But of course, this track, as we did say, very inconsistent. 
So that could be that why he's had a one-off penalty there. Yeah, and that is good for use because Pete Parker, out of these four cars, is the only one without a penalty. Azamata and Foggy both now have one three-second penalty. Sam has two. So if the race finished right now, Pete Parker will find back on the podium. Down the inside. Again at that skin, he's sticking with him. Switch back from the Williams. He's trying, but he doesn't get it into the final sector. I'm just going to wait for that DRS. Yeah, and already Pizza Parker's on the back of Sam to stay in behind. That sh this should be an easy pass for him to get down the past the Red Bull. But will the Williams and the Mercedes swap further up ahead? They've got six more laps to go. There's the fastest lap of the race, unsurprisingly, for Pizza Parker. DRS open on the Williams and on the Red Bull and on the racing point. Sam tries to break him. But there's just not enough grip anymore. Yeah, not able to do anything. So Pizza Parker moves off place. Foggy wasn't able to do so, so he's now going to find himself in the clutches of Pizza Parker. But I don't think he's going to be able to do much to defend. And that gap really is starting to come down at the front. 2.4 seconds now. Yeah, and that's fine in the latter stages. But like I said, it might just be too late. He's got a bit more ERS he behind does, so when he does finally catch, he's got more to attack with. I'd say he's, he's got to gain about half a second over the next two laps to get himself in that DRS zone. To give, just to A, help him catch up, and then he might just have one lap and one possible opportunity to try and get the move done. Foggy will like... have a go once again into turn 13. Yeah, and he's got the overspeed this time in about a car length in front, and yes, he does, he gets it. Nice little squeeze there from Foggy. Fair driving, but Pease Parker crucially got past Sam there. And then the earlier stages that we watched, actually, now I remember. But can Sam maybe have taken advantage of this? I mean, he is well, really struggling. He's struggling, and he does have the penalties. More penalties compared to the others, but if he drops back and there's some contact, who knows? He's got a yellow flag in the final corner for the Alpha that has retired of AB, of Coxie, I should say, actually. Pizza Park maybe not having the straight line speed, but Adamat are going to come right back around Foggy's outside there. That seems like a battle that's going to last the rest of the race. Yeah, but and, uh, also next dice man. <laughs> Gets from past Gazaman. Gazaman. So I said I didn't think he'd be able to do that, but these hard tyres are lasting very well, and that is another couple of points for Nexus, of course. I believe, I'll just have a quick check, he's oh. getting <laughs> clean for two warnings, so maybe... He could, if he gains a bit of time, get himself up into sixth place. Well, I was just looking at Riley there, and I was about to mention that like, he's also on the same strategy, uh, so is Astronaut, and how it would have been a frustrating race, but <laughs> going into turn one, he kind of didn't turn and went straight forward and finally realised, oh crap, there's a corner there. <laughs> 21 lap old tyres plus damaged end plate. It's going to be a very, a very tough final couple of laps for oh. Riley. Snap of Oris here as well. Astronaut is right there. One second is the gap. Foggy. Oh, the contact between Oh, Foggy there and we Azamata. go. Oh, when Sam gets picked up in it as well. We knew it was going to happen. Next Ice Man is now going <laughs> to be promoted to sixth position. Gazman seventh. As a matter from having a brilliant damage limitation race, finally battles too hard and really just ruins what he had there. I only caught the end of that move, if I'm being honest, so I didn't quite see what happened. Sam's had to pick with damage and got himself a five-second penalty. Well, this should so be an easy move now, though, for Pete Parker, as he has on the soft moves to the right-hand side of the track and gets the move done pretty simply there. But no foggy switch back. He's going to fight him on the mediums and is routing the outside. He will go around a swooping left-hander. It's more grip, better tyres against old tyres and... You could possibly say a worn out driver. <laughs> yeah, he tried his best, Foggy. We know he'd fight, we know he's got that in him, but Pizza Parker has moved, made his way up into third place and got that podium. Astronauts, he has got past Riley for what is now seventh place, and Sam coming out just behind the Haas. More and importantly, though, 
Evie Annan, 1.5 seconds. He done what you asked with a five times different in the space of two laps and is now right in the driving seat of this race. Right, at this kind of pace, maybe next time around lap 25, he might have DRS, that second DRS zone. We'll have to wait and see. Evie but, Annan is uh, flying today. This could get very interesting towards the end of this race. But surprisingly, Foggy's sticking with Peter Sparker. It seems like he's a bit like me. When you're behind somebody, you can usually stick with them. And I, I, I drive better behind somebody. Yeah, do our best. Well, have helped him because Dirty Air is nowhere near as prominent on this game as it is in real life. But it's going to be hard for Foggy to even challenge for that third place. I, I don't believe. How's Iceman managed to get himself up into fifth place? He's pure luck, <laughs> to be honest. Like, that was pure luck to get past Gazaman. Oh. But Evie Annan finally gets that other penalty. I mean, he's been pushing extremely hard. But of course, Bovis as well. He's, he's only one warning away from it, but he hasn't had any since lap 17. So maybe that's just why. I think Evie Annan's just going to get another two warnings. No, he hasn't. He is absolutely going for this at the moment. He wants to move down on track. He's, he's in the DRS zone this time around. I mean, <laughs> Bobby's is just going to try and keep it clean, of course. Now, Sam and Riley by is battling for that seven at Oh, there's a huge three man battle. Sam, Riley, Astronaut, both. Well, as we know Riley has wounded. Sam touching the back, Astronaut. Riley almost spinning. Sam's just making his way through these last few cars, and that will be the end of his race now yeah, for Sam battling. Up into seventh place, AB retiring, so both Alphas out of this race. It's been a very hard race for them. We've two laps remaining. Who's going to win out on track? Is it going to be Bobbis, or is it going to be Eva Hannon? Bobbis last one out on track last time. Oh, Eva Hannon again! <laughs> That's so what I'm saying, it's so inconsistent. La I was just saying, Boris, last time out he won on track and ended up finishing second. Is he going to finish second on track this time and end up taking the victory after penalties? I mean, with two, about one and a half laps remaining now, it's crunch time. And yes, Timmy, I am racing and proceeds tonight. It's going to be an absolute chaotic race for me. Uh, I'm just going to try and get a few points. Really, I'm proceeds. That's what I'm going to try. Evian used all his ERS though, and he's getting pushed, but I mean, the, the grid is really squashed up in this lot, in the in the last stages of the race now. Yeah, and he, he seems to have dropped back a bit as well, Evian, and so I'm not sure if that pushing hard just taking too much out of his sight. As a matter, absolutely blitzing the fastest lap on Zabaiza lane, 133.9. He's He'll get the point for a fastest lap if he finishes in the top 10 or not. And I'd say the top 10 is very likely as he catches up to Dan in 10th place at the moment. And Eva Hannon just seems to have dropped back. I think he realises it's not going to happen for him today. So as we come on to the final lap, it is Boris with a 1.6 second lead out on track and six seconds of penalties. But penalty time in the bag. Are we going to see a win after the second place, the last time out for the Renault driver? Yeah, I believe that is Nick in the chat on the One Hub Racing account. So if it is, hello. Credit to Foggy, he's keeping up with Pizza Park here. Yeah, but Pizza Parker now starting to lag, as you just say that. But it's a good entry there from Foggy, so really set himself up and we could be looking at a move on the final lap. As Foggy did improve by a tenth on that lap, so the medium's still going strong. Here goes Foggy, now down the main street, past turn one, into turn two. And diving it down the inside of the soft runner, and Pizza Parker goes to the escape road. Road, but Foggy somehow gets a three-second penalty. Not quite sure what happened there, but Foggy it was <laughs> on the outside. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, Pizza oh, that Parker doesn't have any penalties at all, of course. So he should still get on the podium. But I'm sure he wants to do it out on track and. With Foggy having those two penalties and Nexus Iceman having none. <laughs> that Mercedes it's only has to gain a bit of time. It's close. And he'll get four place here. It's going to happen. It's happened. 
Iriana, another three second penalty. He's just taking them all now. Yeah, Bobby, so well, he won't care as he rounds the final corner. He will take the victory here at the Russian Grand Prix. It's a home win for the medal driver, Eva Hannon. Back uh, in second place, he'll be gutted after the pit stop, and I think that's what ruined the race for him. Who's going to get third out on track? Is it going to be Foggy, or is it going to be Fiesa Park? I think that Williams is going to get it, but he's going to drop back at least one, and probably two places. Two possessions, he will. Daniel gets another pen in the final lap there as Adamator does get past some best one one tenth behind Riley Baez and hoping to make a move on the final lap here there's the championship leader that's going to end up coming out but Adamator around the outside of Riley the winded racing point currently and Adamator at least it's going to bring home two points today three I think yeah, Gaza in six Sam will bring it home in the seventh place out on track but he does got a few penalties so that may drop it I think he should be fine actually behind astronauts it's gonna be close no, he's not. and in the end yeah, and as a matter getting ninth place setting fastest lap once again and overtaking <laughs> what a race that was Pepelu Daniel leaving the session Pepelu coming through the final few corners here to end off Russia for season 14 he comes around the second last corner now the final corner and thank thanks for really staying in there because he just decided to keep racing see what happens but what a cool chaotic start from the race today but Boris coming out on top followed by Evie Annan who looked to be the race winner at the at, at, by the end of the first stint but a pit stop really stopped him doing that mp3 was the racing point of pizza parker who had a great race a stunning drive from him today and definitely my driver of the day yeah it was a great job from him i feel like i can't really go for anyone else but bobby so yeah he, just kept, he had a great kept, start as well he kept he kept it calm while um Eva Hannon was catching up in the end and the Ferrari cracked first getting all those penalties. Great, great job as well though from the Mercedes drivers to recover. Fourth place in the end for Nexus. Although as a matter maybe he could have got a podium if it wasn't for that incident between himself and Foggy as we run through the results. It's Boris in the end taking the victory by nearly 15 seconds from Eva Hannon. Pizza Parker that 11th place once again proving to be a great starting position as he completes the podium. Nexus in fourth and he will have a huge championship lead. We'll work it out exactly at the end of this. And then it is Foggy, Gazaman, Astronauti, Sam, Azamata and Riley Baez rounding out the top 10. Dan will get a point for the fastest lap for outside the top 10 in 11th. Pepper Lou was the only other finisher. We see four retirements there, both Alphas, Ivan and SD Mats. Well, what a race that was. ST Mats going out in the very early stages of lap one, only making it to, I think, the second. Or was it this? I don't know where he went out. I think he went out on the. I think it was two. Long left under. Yeah. But that's where the chaos started, really. Uh, after a kind of domino effect from the debut driver of Astronaut. Um really just sent it down the inside out of nowhere and slammed into one of the Ferraris and then that kind of just went from there all the drivers just exploded there's there's going to be some very angry drivers I feel after the end of that race well I mean we know our driver of the day mine is Pizza Parker coming from P11 we did discuss him that he might put a big impact on the race and he did and that's a very well deserved podium for him yeah I, I predicted Foggy yeah the, it was looking good for him but in the end Pizza Parker's strategy he just he stayed out on the mediums long enough he took full advantage of those soft tyres and also the battling between Azamata and Foggy I know there was some contact between the two of them I didn't quite see what led Pizza to Parker that would have got by, by the enemy Sam unfortunately got caught up in that but Pizza Parker would have got by them as you said and the end of all the race from a championship point of view Nexus Iceman is now 114 points ahead 
of Estimat with 130 points remaining. Well, I mean, it it was a very good race, chaotic, and I'm happy. I mean, it was a race like that because it usually doesn't offer great battles, but surprisingly it did. Yeah, different strategies. Some enforced after the Turn 1 incident. I'd be surprised if someone doesn't try and take Astronaut to the stewards. We'll have to wait and see. Pizza Parker being on a different strategy as well. Some great racing. There'll be a lot of, I think, disappointed drivers at the end of today. I think Boris will be, Boris and Pizza Parker, I think, will be the two happiest. And Nexus will be extremely relieved after getting involved in that starting collision. A, that he didn't cause him to retire, and that he's managed to recover to get fourth place. I mean, it wouldn't put much of an impact on his championship lead, but I'm just going to remind you, every, everyone that's watching, they now go check out our sponsor, Next Level Racing. They help us out, really, for the, the championship winners, giving us free stands for them winners. And, I mean, use code 1hub10 for a 10% discount. Yeah, make, make sure to check that out. Make sure to also check out the Precision tier as well. They're just coming towards the end of their qualifying session. It is Owen and Austin taking you through that as always. As always. Um, well, we will see you next week at, I want to say Mexico. You want to say Suzuka. Suzuka, there we go. I was messing that because Mexico after that, isn't it? Yes. Yes, there we go. Suzuka offers some great racing. I mean, it did. Uh, and I don't know what league that was. I think it was AOR. So we could be seeing some good racing around there on this game. We always, see, we always see good racing. And historically, we have seen a lot of championship deciders around Suzuka. I'd be very surprised if we don't see another one next time out. Well... It was me, Brett, joined by Luke, and we'll see you hopefully next week if Luke is commenting with me. I should. <laughs> he should be, guys. Goodbye.